Erev Tov, good evening. A Devar Torah, or Devar Torah, means a word of Torah. This Devar Torah is about two words of Torah. Erev Rav. They're in our Torah portion, Bo. We read this week of the night when the Israelites begin to leave Egypt. The plagues have concluded. For a moment, Pharaoh's heart is not hardened. He urges the Israelites to leave. And with their kneading bowls on their shoulders, the Israelites take their unleavened dough and they get up and get out. And who goes? Erev Rav. You know this phrase. It's from the word Arav, as in Erev, evening. Same root. And we've all said the word Arav tonight a couple of times already. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, bidvaro, with speech causes ma'ariv aravim, causes the mixing of mixes, or of evenings. Arav can mean to mix. Erev, evening, is a mixture of darkness and light. Arav can also mean woof, as in the warp and woof of weaving. And it's hard not to smile when you say the word woof. In the Bible, Arav can also mean sweet. So that's Erev. Mix, woof, sweet. And then there's Rav, meaning great, a lot, many. And this is why Erev Rav is frequently translated as mixed multitude. A mixed multitude journeyed out of Egypt. Now I had long thought that everyone who took part in the exodus was included in that mixture. A mixed multitude, an Erev Rav, journeyed together towards liberation. Actually, the story and the phrase delineate categories, distinctions. Indeed, the story in the book of Exodus insists on a hierarchy. There's the Israelites. Then there's the Erev Rav. And beneath the air of Rav, there's cattle and sheep. That's who went out from Egypt. Three categories of beings who escaped from servitude and fled into the wilderness. What's more, air of Rav is pejorative. Riffraff, a group of people regarded as disreputable or worthless, would be a close approximation of the intended meaning of Erev Rav. So who went out from Egypt? The Israelites, riffraff, and cattle and sheep. Almost all references to mixing and mixtures in the Bible are negative. Purity of elements is prized. Alloys are not. In the Tanakh, any mixing of people, of non-Israelites with Israelites, is viewed with suspicion. But I've never thought about Erev Rav like that. I doubt that you have either. For me, there was and is nothing negative about Erev Rav. My pride in the term stems from growing up in a community much like this one that welcomed all comers. The alchemy of the synagogue, its capacity to transform us as humans, results from the intermingling of so many different people. The algamation of our individual understandings of faith, our broad spectrum of orientations to Jewish practice, and the many life paths that have led each of us into this community comprise our tremendous tensile strength. We are an alloy. And so, Unlike in the story of the Exodus that we read these weeks, in our story, the story of Congregation Beth Am, we do not uphold such distinctions and fixed categories. Here at Beth Am, there aren't Israelites and a riffraff or a mixed multitude. 
You can choose your translation. Instead, we are just one Erev Rav, and we go forward together. Over generations, we have productively recast the story of the Exodus in our self-image of a diverse, interwoven Jewish community. Who went out of Egypt? Erev Rav. Who stood at Sinai? A mixed multitude just like ours. Wonderfully, we have repurposed what was once a negative description of marginal peoples, of hangers-on. The story has come to reflect us, an egalitarian congregation of seekers, a great mixture of experiences, stories, and beliefs. All week long, I've been thinking about Erev Rav, and certainly yesterday, the anniversary of a mob's assault on our capital, an event which powerfully symbolizes the unraveling of American society. Now, I'm not a weaver. The only thing I've ever literally woven were potholders using those kits with red plastic frames and stretchy bands of cotton fabric. The craft that I do practice is the weaving of metaphors. Yesterday, January 6th, I came across this definition on dictionary.com when I was double-checking my understanding of warp and woof. The essential foundation or base of any structure or organization, from weaving, in which the warp, the threads that run lengthwise, and the woof, the threads that run across make up the fabric. As I did my research yesterday, what felt particularly apropos, even poignant, was the example of usage embedded in that dictionary's entry. It reads, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence are the warp and woof of the American nation. As a country, we are still trying to understand what exactly happened last year. Yet it does seem very clear, as Peter Baker summarized in the New York Times on Wednesday, rather than a wake-up call highlighting for all the fragility of the American experiment, the violence that besieged Washington turns out to have been one more chapter in the polarizing, partisan, ideological and cultural struggle over truth and consequence in the modern era. In great part, I treasure the synagogue because it is a counter-cultural institution. As American society becomes ever more subdivided, the synagogue, Beth Am, our Mishkan, in which we explore our commonalities and respect and sanctify our differences, is an increasingly rarefied space in America. Our house of so many different people serves as a powerful counter to this moment in American culture. And in a world of seemingly ever-hardening hearts, our mixed multitude provides a sanctuary of softness, of caring and compassion, here, we share the privilege to interweave our individual warps with our communal woof, creating a sacred, expansive tapestry woven from so many individual strands of practice and experience. And each and every Shabbat, we celebrate our creation. And together, we enjoy the sweetness of this community. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hama'ariv Aravim. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, expert mixer. And may you bless this Erev Rav with wisdom and with peace. <laughs>